the courses I teach are um, first year writing seminars and they're entitled Writing About Food Equity. So in these classes, the students work with community partners once a week, in addition to coming into class and talking about discussing academic texts that we read together. So in one of the classes, the students are paired with The Haven, which is our local homeless shelter, and also with Loaves and Fishes, which is a food pantry. And then the second class is paired with a community garden and the PB&J fund, which is an educational kitchen for low-wage families and students. When I learned that we were moving our classes online, um, I think my first reaction was, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Because my class is so dependent on the students not only being in Charlottesville, but being able to go to these community partners and work and interact with people there. So that was really one of the saddest parts of this semester was having to email and call the community partners and my contacts there and just, you know, realize that they also were at the edge of their limits, that, you know, their, their worlds had changed. I think moving online wasn't in the end as detrimental as I expected it to be. We sort of quickly pivoted from looking at food equity and um, the unhoused in Charlottesville to looking at those populations in the students' own local communities. So um, their final project was to choose a, a group, a vulnerable group, and talk about the ways in which the pandemic had affected that group in their local community. We were still able to think about some of the same issues, like why are um, people of color being much more affected by this pandemic than white people. We were able to still dig deep into issues of social justice and racism and poverty, um, but instead of focusing just on the Charlottesville community, they were bringing in experiences, research, and ideas from wherever they were living currently. And I think I, I struggled with that final assignment thinking maybe this is the last thing we want to really be writing and thinking about this pandemic right outside our door. But I think it turned out to be really helpful for a lot of students um, seeing writing as a meaningful way to um, couple narrative, their own story, the stories they were seeing around them with research that they still had to incorporate into these final projects. I was just amazed um, by the end of the semester at their resiliency and their diligence and just their commitment because in so many ways, online learning is harder than learning face-to-face -face in terms of motivating yourself and um, still finding energy to care. Um, so I really was, was moved by that watching my students. One of my light bulb moments this semester was how much I kind of privilege the gregarious, um, you know, students in class who are very outgoing and, and excited to participate and how often those voices are the ones that are heard the most. And when we moved to the discussion board, I realized how many smart, compassionate, productive voices have been in the shadows. And that for me was sort of a, an awful teaching moment, but also a really important one because I think moving forward, I'm going to keep a lot of that discussion board work central to the class because I feel like it gave those students who are maybe a little more shy or a little less willing to, to articulate their ideas in real time. It really gave them a voice that they haven't, that maybe I haven't been listening closely enough to. One of the mantras that I kind of repeat to my students throughout the semester is that in my class, we learn with our minds, with our hearts and our bodies. And I think my students come into my class really, really comfortable learning with their brains, right? They know where to find sources and they know um, how to put together a reasonably competent paper. Um, but many of them have not ever been taught or asked to learn with their hearts and their bodies as well. And um, I think that being online opened us up to really learning with our hearts and um, growing compassion and empathy in um, 
really um, pretty moving ways. And so to me, successful teaching is um, arming them with the skills, the writing skills to be able to express those moments, right? When they, they um, have opened their hearts and minds so that they can share that with other people. But I think successful teaching um, is no different online than it is in person. It comes down to creating that connection, creating a passion for subject matter and just creating compassion and connections with other people too. And I think that can happen in different, but just as moving ways online as it can in person.